Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. To many people, politically and in the public, the space race had already been won because Apollo 11 landed successfully on the moon. Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes. One small step for man. Both the Soviet Union and the United States were also in investing in a very robust robotic space exploration program, exploring other planets. Mars has just held this fascination because there's this idea of not only, you know, the possibility of life on that planet at another time, um, but perhaps future of human civilization um, could be moving to Mars. So the Mariner program started out in, in 1960 with a relatively simple goal of exploring Mars and Venus. Mariner 4 is a very important mission when it comes to drawing our attention towards Mars. Begun eight months ago with the launching of the Mars-bound Mariner 4, the latest deep space probe reached a tense climax. The spacecraft is flying toward Mars, about to pass within 6,000 miles of its surface, and then out into space. Mariner 4 uh, did a, a flyby of Mars uh, in July of 1965 and was able to just train its cameras and other instruments on one strip, kind of one strip. And uh, it kind of filled people with a little bit of disappointment. It didn't change too much with Mariner 6 and 7, but again, just single flybys, single sweep flybys of the planet. My job initially on uh, Mariner 6 and 7 was as the experiment representative. Uh, then uh, that sort of transitioned eventually into the Mariner 8 and 9 initially. Last night at Cape Kennedy, something went wrong with the launch of an unmanned Mariner spacecraft. It began tumbling about five minutes after liftoff and it finally fell into the Atlantic. I remember the day that Mariner 8 was launched and uh, was terribly disappointed to hear that it did not make orbit. Every one of these uh, rocket launches is risky. The best way you can mitigate the risk is by launching two. The Russians have two unmanned spaceships heading for Mars. Mariner 9 is finally off on its 247 million mile flight to Mars, expecting to get there the 14th of November. So the Soviet Union launched Mars 2 and 3 just right ahead of the American launch of F Mariner 9. And there was an 11 day difference in, in those uh, missions. The American ship Mariner 9, also unmanned, will arrive in the Martian sky about the same time as the Russian ships. Mars 2 and Mars 3, the Soviet missions, were even more ambitious because they carried landers as well. They, the, the Russians intended to beat NASA and the Americans, not just to orbit, but to the surface as well. It was, um, it was an exciting sort of breakneck uh, competition, really sort of really neck and neck. The Mariner 9 probe uh, was, was traveling much more quickly, so actually ended up arriving at Mars before the Soviet probes were able to arrive. Mariner 9 approaches the most critical phase of its flight. A rocket engine on board will be fired to slow the craft down as it nears the planet. You know, that rocket's been cold for six to nine months, and now you got to stir it up and it's got to work exactly right when you tell it to. That's when something could go wrong. Fortunately, it didn't. Mariner 9 is in orbit around Mars, the first time that man has put a space vehicle into orbit around another planet. Mariner 9 is the first mission ever to orbit another body outside of Earth, other than the moon itself. This is a picture of Mars being received at Mariner Control in California. All they could see was kind of this cue ball, this fuzzy orange-red blob. And we suspect the reason for this is a dust cloud or a yellow cloud or whatever it is that's obscuring the surface features of Mars. The entire planet was shrouded from view in, in what has been one of the largest global dust storms that we've ever observed in the history of exploring Mars. This is obviously a surprise and a disappointment. The Soviet Union had a, a successful um, landing of the Mars 3 mission. It, it actually um, captured images on the Martian surface, but um, because of the storms, it only lasted for a number of seconds. And eventually, the atmosphere cleared uh, very nicely, and 
Mariner 9 began doing what it set out to do, that detailed mapping, that detailed first-time reconnaissance up close of what this place was like. We have a picture from Mars tonight taken from the Mariner 9 spacecraft, which is touring around the Red Planet. It shows a sort of huge Grand Canyon. As we had never seen these kinds of things on another world in our solar system. We saw things that we recognize, the volcanic structures, giant uh, canyon systems, river valleys, you know, very Earth-like things. Mars turned out to be a much more interesting object than we had ever anticipated. You know, the success of the Mars program today for NASA is built on the shoulders of what came before. It took that orbital reconnaissance of Mariner 9 to feed forward to the Viking missions. It took the Viking to feed forward to Mars Pathfinder, to Mars Global Surveyor, to the Mars rovers uh, like the ones that we have now. But Mariner 9 was the first to give us an idea that there was something worth looking at at higher detail. The history of Mariner 9, it was able to change our understanding and imagination of the planet. And it, it was able to help inspire us to want to explore it even more. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.